Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now recently I picked up the brand new Oculus Quest 2. And the reason why I did that is because I end up spending way more time playing and enjoying the PlayStation VR over the last couple years, way more than I expected to. And so I was really curious to see what sort of the latest and greatest would be, so I bought the Quest 2. So for this video, I thought it might be kind of fun for me to compare the pros and cons of each and maybe help you decide which one you should get. Let's take a look. All right, so to compare these two, I'm gonna break it down into categories. I'm gonna compare the hardware, the controllers, the ecosystem and setup, and then of course the games. Starting with the hardware, the attractive part of the Quest 2 is its all-in-one design, meaning that you don't need a computer, you don't need a console to use the Quest 2. This is really huge, you guys, because one of the most annoying things about the PlayStation VR from the beginning is that you have to have it tethered to a PlayStation 4 to even get it to function. Uh, it needs a PlayStation 4 to play, which is frankly really cumbersome, really annoying. So it's nice that the Quest 2 just doesn't have any wires. However, that all-in-one design on the Quest 2 does come at a cost and that is battery life. It's not great on the Quest 2. And that's because, you know, the battery's got to fit in that visor along with the entire computer and everything else. And so you really only get about two hours of gameplay. And honestly, that goes pretty quickly, especially when you are in an awesome game. So I would love to see that improved if possible in the future. Another big comparison between these two VR headsets is the resolution that they're displaying stuff at. So uh, the PlayStation VR has a resolution of 1080 by 960 pixels per eye, where the Quest 2 has uh, 1832 by 1920. So as you can see there, it is a huge upgrade in visual quality per eye using the Quest 2. Not super surprising considering it is obviously a couple years newer, but the end result is everything looks so much clearer. That, um, that screen door effect that you would get in the PlayStation VR is practically gone when using the Quest 2. It is noticeably better. And by the way, guys, I should probably mention that the way I'm capturing and showing gameplay footage in this video is vastly different depending on the different headsets. So with the PlayStation VR, I'm actually using a uh, external game capture device, basically capturing the output from the PlayStation 4, which is why it looks a little bit bigger. But uh, game capture is built into the Quest 2 and and what it does, it actually captures just one of the eyes. And so that's why it looks a little bit you know, narrower. Uh, so just be aware that that's kind of what's going on here. The next thing I wanna compare between these two is the comfort level wearing these VR headsets on your head. Now, the PlayStation VR, I feel is extremely comfortable and it's been that way since day one. Uh, it just goes on, it's really well balanced, it doesn't hurt your head or give you a headache after a couple hours. At least that's been my experience and people that I know who have used it. But that has not been my experience using the Quest 2 out of the box. And there may be several reasons for that. I think one of the obvious reasons being, again, that it's an all-in-one solution, meaning that there is, I assume, a printed circuit board in there as well as a heavy battery all in that front visor. So it's not balanced when it goes on your head like the PlayStation VR. And out of the box, it kind of digs into your forehead a little bit. I was I was actually getting a bit of a headache, uh, which is something I never got using the PlayStation VR. The other thing being is that it comes with a pretty cheap and chintzy fabric strap uh, when you buy it stock, you know, uh, out of the box. It's not great. Um, it doesn't provide a whole lot of support to your head. And so many people recommend that you get the optional Elite head strap, but get this, it's 50 extra dollars. Wow, that is painful to the wallet and frankly a little expensive, but I did it and I have to admit it is worth it. So if you find yourself really loving the Quest 2, but you're dealing with that cheesy fabric strap that it comes with, you might consider upgrading, I guess. 
And so now let's take a look at the controllers. And this is my first time messing around with the Quest 2 controllers that come in the box. And I have to say, actually, they're nicely designed and they work really well, even though they look a little bizarre with that with that circle on the top there, but I guess it uses it for motion tracking and distance tracking uh, when you have the headset on. Plus they have all the buttons and controllers that you want and the batteries in there actually last forever. So while you know the visor only lasts for a couple hours, it seems like the batteries in the controllers actually last for weeks or months. It's very impressive. Now, when it comes to the PlayStation VR, well, you have a couple options here. So obviously you're gonna be using the PlayStation 4 controller, which is great. And obviously I love it. It works really well in 99% of the VR games. Um, however, there are a handful of PlayStation VR games out there that either support or will require the motion controls. And you see them here. These were originally launched for the PlayStation 3 and they work, um, but they're not as good or as ergonomic or as nice looking, I think, as the Quest controllers. And then the other thing I wanna mention is that the Quest 2 actually supports controllerless control, i.e. just using your hands. And I had no idea it did this when I ordered the Quest 2. It was definitely a surprise and a really cool feature. Now, I'll be honest, it's not great, it's not perfect, but it does work. As you can see here, it's actually tracking your individual fingers in real time. And then there's gestures that you can use to move windows around, select things, launch things, bring up the menu, stuff like that. This is definitely gonna be the future one day. It's so trippy and so cool. You'll have to try it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the ecosystem and also some of the setup. So when it comes to the PlayStation VR, obviously I mentioned that you have to have a PlayStation 4 to even use one. And of course there's a bunch of wires that's kind of annoying, but you know, you get over it, you get used to it. But when it comes to the ecosystem, when you actually have the visor on, well, it doesn't feel very special at all or really designed for VR because you're just essentially getting the regular PlayStation 4 interface. You know, it feels tacked on because it really is. It's nothing special. Again, the, the, the PlayStation VR came out after the PlayStation 4 was already released and so, you know, it's just it's just a part of that ecosystem and a part of that operating system. And the reason why I mention this at all is because when I put on the Quest 2, I was blown away by how immediately it transported you into another world. And that's where everything that you do using that device exists. It's so much fun to explore. And it's more than just games because you have things like a virtual movie theater where you can watch movies, TV, and even trailers, but you're sitting in an environment like a movie theater with complete strangers, or you can actually like, uh, you know, host a private party with friends or family. Uh, immediately, I was just, again, blown away by its entire experience. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what Sony tried to do on the PlayStation 3 with their home app. Do you remember that? That was their graphical interface that they, you know, kind of advertised that people would be launched into and you'd hang out and, you know, watch movies or play games and stuff like that. Well, the Quest 2 is doing that. And so when it comes to setting up the Quest 2, you have the ability to map out a guardian space or basically like a fence within your game room or your living room or your bedroom or wherever you're playing, uh, essentially so that it can track in real time and give you feedback in case you know, you're know you gonna bump into something or step out of bounds. Now what's interesting about the Quest 2 is that you have a pass-through mode, which allows you to look through the cameras on the front of the visor into your real world space. Now it looks kind of fuzzy in black and white and it actually doesn't allow you to video capture that part of it just yet. So what you're seeing here actually is my recreation of what that looks like with the visor on, but it's super handy because Again, you can set the, the guardian fence so that you don't bump into anything. Plus, at any time, you can just like double tap the side of the visor, the headset, and you can go into that mode. So if someone's calling you, you can actually quickly look at your real phone. If you wanna pick up like a remote or you just wanna check the room to see you're in the correct space or maybe the dog walked in or your wife or whatever, it's really nice that it has that. However, there is one huge gotcha when it comes to the Quest 2 and setup. And that is, it requires, it requires a Facebook login. 
Yep. So that really sucks and it may be a deal killer for some people out there. You know, Oculus is owned by Facebook and I guess in the past they said that they would never require a Facebook login, but of course now with the Quest 2, they do require you to have one for some reason. Honestly, it's stupid, it's annoying. I don't like it either, um, but you know, you have to kind of weigh the pros and the cons. And so for me, I want to use the Quest 2, so I'm using my Facebook login. As to how big of a deal that is, well, that's gonna be up to you. Moving on to the games, well, the PlayStation VR definitely feels like last generation. And you know, that's because it is. And you really see the difference when you swap back and forth between the two VR headsets. You know, I mentioned it previously, you know, those PlayStation VR games, they, they look pixelated and they look pixelated since the very beginning. But again, it was doing the best it could at the time. But man, you know, going to the Oculus Quest 2, yeah, it's noticeably better. However, the PlayStation VR already has a ton of great games released for it, both first party and third party. Now, when I was researching this video, I was on Wikipedia trying to figure out exactly how many games were released on each, and they were showing that a little over 600 games were released for PlayStation VR, but when it comes to the Oculus Quest, both one and two, which the Quest will play, it'll play all of them, uh, there was only around 200 games, so significantly less. And don't forget that there's been some physical releases of PlayStation VR games, which you see here, which is great because, again, you're gonna be able to play these five, 10, 20 years in the future. So when it comes to games on the Quest 2, obviously we're talking about next generation hardware. So yes, they definitely look better than the PlayStation VR. Plus what's really cool is that a lot of those first generation Quest games are getting updated to take advantage of the new Quest 2 hardware. I also wanna mention that the Quest 2 can be tethered to a powerful PC if you happen to have one, and then you can use it as a dedicated VR solution for that computer so that we can run a little bit more higher end VR games like say, you know, Half-Life Alex. So yeah, I've been having a ton of fun playing a bunch of games on the Oculus Quest over the last couple weeks. Now it is kind of a bummer that the game library isn't as big as the PlayStation VR and Let's be honest, there are some great exclusives for the PlayStation VR, but that's okay. I mean, the Quest 2 just came out and it'll be interesting to see how well it's received and maybe more exclusive games will come to it. So as you can see, there is a lot to like about the Quest 2, which isn't really surprising considering that as of the making of this video, well, it's the latest and greatest when it comes to virtual reality. But what is kind of surprising is that the prices between the two are closer than you might think. I certainly was surprised when I looked into it. So the Quest 2 starts at $299, but I actually paid for the upgraded model at $399 because it had significantly more internal storage. That's important for me because I end up you know, playing more games on it, plus I wanna be able to capture gameplay footage and they all get stored on that internal storage. So that was kind of worth it and important to me. Now, what's surprising though, is that when I looked up prices for the PlayStation VR, well, most of the bundles that I see are anywhere from $300 to $350, which again, I was surprised to see considering that the PlayStation VR has been out for so long. However, a lot of those do come with a game and maybe some controllers, but keep in mind though, you do have to already have a PlayStation 4. Now, if you have a PlayStation 4, well, this is a very good solution. It's not the, the latest and greatest, but again, there are so many great games for it that um, you know I've certainly enjoyed the many years that I've been playing it, and uh, you know I don't regret it at all. I think anyone who gets it is probably going to be very happy. Me personally, though, it's going to be hard to go back to PlayStation VR once I once I experience the uh, the Oculus Quest 2 because again, it's just a generational leap in that technology. Also, you know, and I mentioned it too, is that, you know, the the improved technology in here makes me way less uh, motion sick. Not only me, but actually my wife, Rebecca. Rebecca was barely able to play the PlayStation VR. It made her motion sick almost immediately. Uh, now, the Quest though, the Quest 2, she loves. She actually, uh, she told me she wants one for Christmas, which is saying a lot because she is not an early adopter when it comes to technology. And so she was really impressed with the Quest 2. Uh, she loves it. And so 
I think actually it's a pretty awesome system if you can get past the whole integration with Facebook. That's a a little bit of a bummer, but oh well, what are you going to do? So anyways, guys, I'd love to know what you think down in the comments below. Are you rocking VR in some form, whether it's the VR or the PlayStation VR or the Oculus uh, Quest 2, maybe something on the PC? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. As always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.